What's up guys, welcome back to The Home Slice. I just wanted to take a second to shoot a video today to respond to the disastrous failure of the edge of Maximet that I sharpened on Pete's channel over at Cedric and Ada. And I figured it'd be a good opportunity actually for me to share some of the things that I'm learning and some of the things that I've taught that actually have been misconceptions or incorrect because there's been like one here and one there and they've sort of accumulated over time. But I want to make sure to sort of set the record straight and make sure that the information that's coming from this channel is like solid and dependable. Before I jump into that though, I want to make mention that I actually did a collaboration video with my friend Drew. We took a little Gerber axe that he has owned for about 10 years and has just really beat the tar out of and abused. And we put a vinegar patina on it, resharpened it, and tested before and after and just did a pretty complete restoration of it. So if you're interested to see some of that, Drew tends to be a real good filmographer. Is that a word? Anyway, uh, link's up there if you want to see that. Also, I apologize because today was meant to be a joyous day where I have higher audio quality. Can you tell that the audio quality is not any better? Well, <laughs> I bought this awesome Rode Video Micro because it was highly recommended by people and articles. And as it turns out, I'm such a noob to YouTube, a noob, noob tuber, that um, I didn't realize you need an adapter to connect this into the DJI Osmo Action, which is what I generally am using to shoot my videos. So it's on the way, but you guys aren't gonna get better audio quite yet. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I think that there are a lot of questions that might come up. So just to address those right now, I do not think that this test reveals any inaccuracy about what Pete is doing. If anything, I think it quite confirms that slightly poor angle or a slight foil burr or some kind of inconsistency at the edge can be detectable by rope cutting tests, which I think is quite a testament to the fact that that they're accurate and that Pete's doing good work. So I definitely, definitely believe that this failure of the Maxima Edge was in no way related to Pete <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, secondly, I don't think that it's an indicator that you can't do dual grit on high carbide steels. In fact, the first steel that Pete tested was M390 and it did quite well. So I, it may be that Maximet doesn't take a dual grit edge well because as we've learned in the Science of Sharp article, the method really depends upon kind of bending over that large burr from the coarse diamond stone and then actually realigning it. But maybe in the movement of metal, there's so many carbides and there's so, and, and Maximet is at such a high level of hardness that maybe Maximet isn't a good candidate. Definitely, Todd Simpson, when I talked to him, he's having his doubts about whether Maximet would, could be effectively dual grit sharpened. And Pete as well is sort of wondering, have we just pressed it too far and is Maximet maybe not? I kind of am of the mind. I've seen Roman from K's Knives harden stuff up to the mid 60s, Rockwell 65, 66, and then show how it flexes and stuff like that. And I'm of the mind that it bears further experimentation because I don't know, if we could extend the edge life on Maxima, it would be ridiculous, right? It would last for so long. So I think we've got to test it out. I don't think it's a failure of Pete's. I don't feel like it's a failure of the dual grip method. I'm not convinced it's a failure of Maxima, and I'll tell you why. So after I shipped the knives off to Pete in anticipation that they might do well, <laughs> which the first one has not. I actually shot some tutorial videos about how to mimic the sharpening method that I used on each of them. And I actually took my Spyderco military with M4. Nigel is his name. He's back. Guys, Nigel's back. This is Nigel. Anyway, sorry. I used him for some of the tutorial videos. And I used some lapping film and I used Veneve stones in these tutorials. 
and I'm not familiar with them very well. And I actually went out with my landlord to do some gardening and we had some weed mat we needed to cut um, pieces out of, but it's covered in dirt, it was old. And so I cut these chunks out of the weed mat and blasted the edge through that dirt covered sort of plastic. And uh, I noticed that the performance of the edge dropped quite dramatically pretty quickly. So I was confused by that. I went back inside and looked at it and you could actually see this glint of light along the whole apex and it was tiny. It was like I had broken off over the entire surface a tiny burr and I was like, how could that be? I, I didn't think that the methods and the stones that I was using could create a burr and I didn't feel a burr, more importantly maybe. I went to the Science of Sharp and started reading through articles and I found out that at times you can produce a burr that is so thin and small, especially with things like lapping film, if you don't do something else to remove a bit of burred material, you can create what's called a foil burr. And as I looked into some of the research that Todd has done on the science of Sharp, and also a bit of the research that Vadim Krojcik has done on knife grinders, the, which is a YouTube channel you guys should check out if you haven't. He does some really cool work. It doesn't apply super directly to me because I, only, I exclusively hand sharpen, but it has tons of helpful information even so, and he's done very scientific and sort of systematic testing of honing and deburring. And I found out that these foil burrs can become so small that you can't really feel them, and of course you can't see them, but they'll, they'll break off quickly under heavy use. And so I came to the conclusion that the sharpening method which I had used and sent the knives to Pete actually created a foil burr on this M4, and even on the tough M4, it broke off quite quickly and quite completely. And so I was really nervous for Pete to test the Maximet because I wasn't sure about that. Now, was there a foil burr on the Maximet that broke off and that's why Pete noticed entire portions of the edge, like the, the height changing? I don't know. Was it that the folding of the metal back and forth that dual grit does was too much for the hardness level of Maximet and the entire large burr, which is supposed to be the sharpened portion that is giving you that added wear resistance, broke off entirely? I don't know. I know that I had problems with M4 and so it leads me to kind of think it may not just be a steel thing. It, it's probably a technique thing and it's probably me getting way too excited and, and amped about new sharpening gear and sending off untested equipment. I think that's probably where most of the responsibility lies, if I'm honest. And I also took this um, spider coat to the strop after breaking the whole thing off. And the section of apex that was broken off was so small that just with stropping, I was able to get it razor sharp again. So I'm kind of leaning towards the idea of a foil burr myself as my best guess, simply because I feel like if the whole apex had broken off, it seems like it would have been large enough that it would have been difficult to resharpen with stropping alone. It seems that way to me. Anyway, this is not the only mistake or misconception that I've had, and I actually had this sort of premonition that the edge might fail, and I was like a bit worried about it, so I'm not super, super surprised at the result, but it's going to launch me into a whole new series of tests where I'm gonna set out to sort of systematically test what successfully makes a dual grit edge in a much more structured way, which is cool. So initially I had produced videos that say, hey, dual grit works on every sharpening system, with every stone, with every method. It's just because the coarse grit and the fine grit are working together to give you better edge retention. It does not appear that that is the case. I think if anything, this test with Cedric and Ada shows that I don't even know every time whether I've successfully created a longer lasting dual grit edge. I can't see it. And the Science of Sharp article shows us that it's actually due to the mechanics that happen right at the apex and right on the burr. And so, I think it bears a lot more testing. I don't think that every stone or every method will produce a dual grit edge that actually boosts your performance. I think there's probably a wide variety, but I'm gonna sort of make it my mission to find out which ones do. 
I think initially I was so excited and caught up with the excitement of everything that I just assumed that this was like this revolutionary new thing, which it is quite a new uh, thing that has not been researched much and it does have exceptional results. But I think that looking at things now, I, I realized that actually that was quite a big conclusion to jump to. And now I'd like to embark on some much more systematic testing. Now that I know that dual grit's not like figured out, there's a lot of data that we probably need to get. No, not really. It doesn't really perform because there's large cutting teeth that have little tiny cutting teeth carved into them. Now, that said, Dr. Todd Simpson in the Science of Sharp article that he wrote, which I'll put below in the description. If you haven't read it yet, I really recommend you check it out because it's quite a shift in our thinking about why this sharpening method produces the results that it does. He did say in later conversations that it could be that the unevenness of the edge does provide some benefit, but it's not large cutting teeth that act like serrations. If you look at the electron microscope images, and I'll throw one up right now, you can see that the edge is at uneven heights. It's not uniform and it's not lined up with the sort of troughs that have been cut by the abrasive particles. But Todd Simpson told me that it's not really understood all of the mechanics of why coarse edges or uneven edges slice more efficiently sometimes. He's researching it a bit now. But it, it could be that the unevenness when you're doing a rope cut test does provide a method for the fibers to get separated out and then a little bit of texture for them to begin to get caught because it seems that there's two stages of cutting. There's initiating the cut and there's propagating the cut and it could be that the unevenness of the dual grit edge helps with initiating the cut by catching fibers, separating them and then initiating the separation of the fiber and that then the the way that the apex comes up and then the burr stays thin for a portion could actually help with propagating the cut. So initially that unevenness catches the fibers and as it begins to cut through them, then they pass through easily that first section of the apex because it's thinner than the rest of the apex. It's sort of a, a guess, that's not concrete knowledge at this point. Several guys sort of point out that in the initial tests, when I would shave, I would only shave uh, with the fine side going in the direction that the hair is hanging, and then I'd come against the direction of the hair with the coarse side every time. Now that's simply because I usually like to have the fine side facing me because when I pull the knife out, I like for it to look like it's been fine sharpened. And at that angle, holding it in my right hand, my dominant hand, uh, it's easy to go those two directions against the hair. That said, after there was two or three guys that kind of said, hey, you should try shaving the other direction. It's not really a fair test if you only go uh, one direction with the fine side and one direction with the coarse side because it could be that the direction that the hair is laying is actually affecting the results. And I tried it several times and several tests and got really inconsistent results. I find that the only generalization I can make is that the fine side does seem to, to shave a little bit smoother and the coarse side does seem to shave a little bit more unevenly. But sometimes the coarse side does shave. It depends on how much you strop it and it also depends on the direction of the hair as these guys have pointed out. So I guess this is like me officially rescinding that claim. It doesn't only shave one direction. That's been more or less debunked. It's slightly better at shaving in on the fine side because of the smoothness of that side of the edge. It's not as marked a difference as I originally believed. So there you go. Let the truth be known. <laughs> well, that's a great question because I did produce a whole video about edge balance and claimed that you could become really good at deburring. So if I have indeed left a small burr on Maximet, that would be somewhat embarrassing. But I have to say, 
that two weeks ago I went to ask Dr. Todd Simpson a question on the scienceofsharp.com, but in an effort to not ask him something that he's already published an entire article about and waste his time, I went through and read a bunch of his articles, more than I have before, probably two-thirds or more of his articles I just read through and sort of digested the information. And I have to say that actually a lot of the things that I have said were not correct when you look at things with an electron microscope, when you can actually see what's happening along the edge. In fact, a lot of the information that's out there among the sharpening community is questionable, if not outright incorrect. I'll give you some examples here. So 